musket comes up, while it's coming up, you're talking the musket. And yours is tough. Yeah. There you go. Cartridge. Dump that powder into the barrel. All of it. Load him up. Load him up. All right. Uh -oh. Okay. Nice. So once you fired it, drop nice. it straight down. Drop okay. Nice. Nicely done. Gotta go faster. Half-gun firelock. Awesome. Small repeat. World War II veterans made their way onto the USS Constitution for a turnaround in Boston Harbor to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the invasion of Normandy. I'll tell you, this is, this is amazing to me. Doug Bryant was a teenager when he enlisted in 1943. My brother was, was over there on D-Day in a prisoner of war camp, you know, the refugees that they took out. He said it was worse than they ever uh, publicized in the newspapers, you know. So, so that's why we have to maintain our freedom. I was in the service for about three years and nine months in the U.S. Air Force. I went to midshipman school, torpedo school, and then, the, then on a board ship. How old are you? Uh, almost 94. At Castle Island, a 21-gun salute, then a wreath dropped into Boston Harbor in remembrance. While veterans reflected on their service, two sailors re-enlisted on Old Ironsides. Against all enemies, war and domestic. That probably brought back memories of when they re-enlisted and their shipmates re-enlisted. And to see that that carries forward and that we've held on to those traditions here. Everyone here thankful to continue the tradition of honoring those who serve. Maybe I had great things happen to me when I was younger and I didn't appreciate them, but boy, something like this, I'm just so proud to be with all these military people. Jennifer Egan, WCVB News Center 5. That. John Benda, 76th commanding officer of USS Constitution, more officially known as Old Ironside, the oldest and finest commissioned warship afloat in the world. 
this 223 tall masted 44 cent tray and I'm standing in front of you today. Thank you very much for joining us as we uh, celebrate our nation's Independence Day on this July 4th. I'd like to say first and foremost welcome back to all of our fans on USS Constitution's main Facebook page that have joined us for a virtual tour previously, the 104 virtual tours that we've done, and the 2.1 million viewers uh, views that we've generated. Also like to say thank you for joining us, anyone from the Navy's main Facebook page, the service members, the service uh, 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 members, family members, uh, thanks for being us, with us today. Uh, especially because this year is a little bit different. We've done everything in the virtual environment in my first four months of this tour, uh, and this is no different, uh, no kidding. Uh, first, I'd like to say that USS Constitution sailors and I continue to take the COVID-19 virus very seriously. I have my mask right here, and you will see all of my 80 sailors wearing their, their masks throughout the day. Unless they're speaking, we're not uh, having the ability to maintain six foot separation the whole time. I'd like to say great job to my peers across the fleet and across the Navy for making sailor health and safety their number one priority. Uh, a tough, tall task while also keeping up the mission. Great effort and great job to all of my peers out there. And thank you. If this were a normal year, the crew and I, right at this time, would make it preparations to take USS Constitution out to sea, or at least through Boston's Inner Harbor, to bring you uh, and, the, and the 500 guests that we've invited on board through a national lottery, a chance to see Constitution in action through gun drills, through pike drills, through sailing, evolu uh, sailing evolutions, uh, and, and uh, getting the experience of seeing this ship at sea, which is what she's designed to do and absolutely still capable of doing. Now that tradition of taking the ship out to sea actually dates back to the 1950s, more out of necessity, uh, where the ship literally needed to get underway to be turned around in a harbor so that one side didn't get more weather than the other. It became such a, a popular event and we invited the public on board. Uh, became a tradition on July 4th and so popular that we've continued the tradition and expanded it where we've had up to seven underway demonstrations throughout the year. Even though we didn't do one in May, we didn't do one in June, we're unable to do one today for a variety of reasons. We are still looking forward to doing an underway demonstration in September or maybe further in October. So keep your eyes out. That's okay, because today we can still, be in the virtual world, give you the experience of being on a gun team, being on a drill team. You are going to hear the Declaration of Independence read by the Navy's finest sailors. You're gonna get a first person point. Right, you thought we were done shooting stuff? Come on, it's the 4th of July. We are still gonna be firing gunpowder through our muskets. After that, we have some final words from our 76th commander. Commander John Bendit, who will close it up. And thank you so much for everyone that joined us today. It has been fantastic having you uh, celebrating 4th of July. I want to wish everyone a happy and safe 4th of July as we introduce our 1812 Marines. So right over here. Yeah. Uh, Gentlemen, are you ready to fire a musket? I'm ready to see a musket fired. These are the 1812 Marines. Hello! How is everybody? The, the Marine uniform, uh, as you can see, it's a very uh, colorful and uh, ornate uniform. It's all wool. Uh, the, 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 the coatee is wool. The gaiters are wool. The trousers are linen. They have a linen shirt underneath. Uh, it's very hot. This is a year-round uniform. Whether it's in the summer or the winter, this is what we wore to battle. Um, anytime we were on duty. We have a set of cross belts. On one cross belt, we have a cartridge box. This holds our ammunition. You can see the cartridges in there. On the other side is a scabbard, and this would hold the bayonet, which is this. This is a sort of a standoff weapon. We can use the, the bayonet um, much like we'd use a spear. Uh, or a, um, a pike. Uh, you saw earlier the pike drills. This is sort of a personal pike uh, kind of thing. Um, we have a shako, which is the hat. The shako is a, um, a Belgian origin, and it's designed to make the Marines look taller and more imposing or threatening. Uh, above the shako is a, um, 
what we have is a uh, modern military, you have a badge of rank on your, sh on your sleeve. We wear the rank on our hats. So you see the privates here have what's called a plush plume. I am portraying a corporal, so I have a feathered plume and one epaulet. Uh, a sergeant would have a taller feathered plume on the left side of the shako and two epaulets. Those were the only ranks for the enlisted people, private, corporal, and sergeant. Then you would get into the officer ranks, which were lieutenant, uh, captain, major, lieutenant colonel, and colonel. Um, on board the ship, there would normally be two lieutenants or a lieutenant and a captain. Um, the weapon we're carrying is a, is a flintlock musket. These were made uh, these particular models were made by the British East India Company um, in the mid to late 1700s. The U.S. acquired about 5,000 of these after the Revolutionary War from the British. We bought them from the British and they became the preferred weapon for the U.S. Marine um, for a number of reasons, mostly because it's a little bit shorter than the standard uh, Springfield musket, which was about four inches higher, so it's easier to move around a low overhead deck like on the Constitution. It's got a lot more brass on it, which doesn't rust. So again, in the sea environment, that helps a lot. And it's got a larger bore, so a little bit bigger musket ball, which gives us a little bit more stopping power for the for the, um, for the Marine, for the uh, firing. Um, we're going to transition now from talking to, we're gonna do a little bit of musket demonstration here. So what I will do is I'm going to give, as if we were training troops, we have something called loading by word. And so each position in the loading and firing drill has a command associated with it. And we're gonna go through that with the troops right now and we'll actually fire the muskets. All right, so. Load by word, open, pan. Handle cartridge. Prime. Shut pan. Charge cartridge. Remove rammer. Ram cartridge. Turn rammer. Shoulder arm. Make ready. Take aim. going to go through um, what would normally be the normal mode of loading in battle is all at once as quick as you can um, and this will repeat until the order was given to cease firing so it's called uh, fire at will uh, so fire at will prime and load That's the loading and fire drill for the U.S. Marine. Uh, we were trained to be able to get three rounds a minute. Uh, that was the, the, the fastest you could do. Some of you were really good and took some shortcuts. You could get four rounds 
um, but that was at the cost of you weren't um, ramming properly and you probably had a little worse aim and a little less power behind the, the, the round. So three rounds a minute was standard for the time. Um, you can see it takes a while to reload the weapon. It's about 20 seconds to reload the weapon. Uh, but this is what every army in the world was doing back then. Um, so that's our presentation. Um, I don't know if we're doing questions. No. no? Uh, hey, thank you so much for our 1812 Marines. They did a fantastic job showing off the Marine Corps heritage on this ship. And there is so much Marine Corps heritage on this ship. The Marines and the sailors fought on this ship side by side. So, if you're a Marine watching this, know that the history of USS Constitution is the history of the US Marine Corps, just as much as it represents Navy history. So if you're in the comments right now, give us a Semper Fi, Marines. Now, I'm gonna turn it over to our 76th Commanding Officer, Commander John Benda, to close us up. Thank you so much for spending part of your 4th of July with us. Wish you a happy and a safe one. Hello, everyone. Yes, just a quick closure. Thanks to everyone for tuning in. It's really an incredible day, a special day for us to get back into the routine of what we love to do, and that's talking about USS Constitution history for our fans and for our visitors. As things start opening up, as travel starts opening up across the country, there's nothing like being here in person. We're expecting, hoping to open the ship to general visitation in August 7th in collaboration with our great partners at the USS Constitution Museum and the National Park Service of Boston. So please come see us in person, come uh, visit Boston, come visit us at the Charlestown Navy Yard, and I look forward to seeing you on board Old Ironsides. Constitution out. of vexing the enemy's merchant trade and hopeful of finding a British frigate willing to engage him in a duel. 
Captain Ho boldly charted a northern course against British shipping in the Halifax Gulf of St. Lawrence area. The frigate which had been sighted by the able seamen and for which Hull was so eagerly seeking was the Guerriere, a 38-gun ship commanded by Captain James Dakers. HMS Guerriere just happened to be among the five ships that had given us chase just one month earlier. However, during that engagement, the ill-fated Guerriere failed to grasp the fact that Constitution and the other American frigates of her class were the most formidable craft afloat and that they would revolutionize the design of war vessels for half a century thereafter. The two ships make their approach. <laughs> the bosun bites the call. All hands clear ship for action, and the drums beat to battle stations. Two shots. 
ships foul each other. HMS Carrier entangles her forward mast and rigging with our quarter stern, locking the two ships together for a brief moment. First Lieutenant Charles Morris and Marine Corps Lieutenant William S. Bush gather a boarding party and run to the back of the ship. Show our borders, sir! <laughs> Lieutenant William S. Bush is mortally wounded during his attempt to board Guerriere, becoming the first Marine officer to die during a seagoing battle. <whistles> USS Constitution begins to drift away from the shattered hull of Guerriere, dragging down the forward mast of the enemy ship, reducing her to a floating, tattered hulk. HMS Guerriere then fires a single shot in the leeward direction from the battle scene, singling surrender, and allowing old Ironside to take on board prisoners and sink the damaged enemy. A determined crew, combined with good fortune, won Constitution its first victory of the War of 1812. Huzzah! All told, USS Constitution would lose seven men and seven more wounded in action. The British would lose 15 men and 78 wounded. Over the next several years, Constitution would have two other major naval victories over the British against HMS Java, while under command of Captain William Bainbridge, and a two-on-one battle against HMS Siam and HMS Levant, while under command of Captain Charles Stewart. Constitution's victories while of course worthy of being well remembered, were only a part of this country's ultimate victory to solidify our independence. There were 12 United States Navy frigates in action over that three year period, including the other original six commissioned frigates, USS Constellation, USS President, USS Congress, USS Chesapeake, and the USS United States, and also including USS Niagara, USS Lawrence, and USS Essex, my old ship, now known as the Iron Bear. The lesson, no ship could go it alone. The current mission of this command and the active duty crew of 80 sailors is to preserve, protect, and promote not just the legacy of old Ironsides, but all of our armed service, and particularly the United States Navy, the ships and squadrons and special units deployed across the world right now. We physically embody the Navy Corps values of courage, honor, and commitment. Our 223 years in service represent perseverance and our 33 naval engagements with zero defeats represent the maritime excellence and superiority on the high seas, which we still have today. In closing, the crew and I want to recognize the men and women serving on board ships and squadrons at sea in 2020, who also continue to honor the legacy and spirit of those fallen in the Battle of Guerriere. And with this following 21-gun volley, we salute you. I am Command Senior Chief Hans Valdespo, and I dedicate this round to USS Winston S. Churchill, DDG 81, out of Norfolk, Virginia. Most mate, second class, Jason Pye, and I dedicate this round to USS Theodore Roosevelt, CBN 71, the big stick. I'm Logistics Specialist, first class, David Curley, and I dedicate this round to USS Carter.
Builder Chief Thomas Kamara and dedicate this round to Naval Mobile Construction Battalion 27. For the Boaster's Mate Chief James Gandy and I dedicate this round to the USS George H.W. Bush CBN 77. Man 1, Bad Veteran, I dedicate this round to the Captain Group of the USS Iwo Jima LHD 7. Check out Celia Fabrizio. I dedicate this round 